What's good everyone, Romero17 here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. This is going to be a combo guide on Gokan Saki's custom combination list. But before I go on that, Saki in this game, he was a little bit better in UFC 3, mainly because he had access to takedown counters, which made it a lot harder to take him down. But in this game, his striking is very solid. Obviously, he is a multiple-time kickboxing champion. But his grappling is absolutely dog terrible in this game. Although I don't really like that his clinch striking and clinch control isn't good. Granted, he didn't do too well in the UFC. He stated that, you know, the wrestling practice was a lot on him. You know, that it was actually harder than to train for MMA than it was to actually go fight for MMA. And it's understanding, you know, you're been striking your entire life. You have to grapple and everything else. And he's a little bit older too. His health stats aren't exactly there, but... He made his return, I believe, uh, late in 2021 and had a successful comeback to kickboxing. But yeah, with Saki, you're not going to see his combination list. He has level 5 boxing, level 4 kickboxing, level 4 Muay Thai. None of it is going to say the Gokan Saki combination list. So this video is going to help you be able to use that when you're playing online on UFC 4 with Saki. I'm wondering if I should do a video like this for Max Holloway. Let me know in the comments. So, the first thing is very, very simple, alright? The legend is going to have numbers from 1 through 8. Right? It's going to be, one is going to be the jab. All right? That's it. It's not that complicated. Two is going to be the straight. All right? Three is going to be the lead hook. Three B is going to be lead body hook. If you see four, four means rear hook. All right? That's it. Rear hook. Five is going to mean lead uppercut. And you could double up with the lead upper with Gokan Saki. That's a signature thing that he has access to. All right, so pay in mind with that. He has, of course, six is going to be the rear uppercut. And the final two numbers are seven, which is the lead overhand, and eight, which is going to be the rear overhand, or it might be the haymaker for him in this game. But regardless, still a rear-handed overhand strike. Y'all yeah, know what I mean. So first up is going to be the one, two, five, four, three. So it's going to be a jab, cross, lead uppercut, rear hook and lead hook to the head this is how it's going to look like when you execute this move correctly remember you can always pause the video you can put slow-mo on if you need to be any slower than this so you can see exactly what the strikes are going to be for the combination that is listed in the numbers on top of the screen the second custom combo is the jab cross lead hook lead body hook rear leg kick it can also be done with a calf kick because ufc4 has calf kicks in the game now the jab, cross, lead body hook, lead uppercut, rear hook, and rear leg kick. Disgusting combination. Can also be finished with a calf kick. Then you have the cross, lead hook, double lead uppercut. One of my favorite combinations to use with Saki. Then the cross, lead uppercut, rear hook, lead hook. Although I do think level 5 boxing usually has access to that. Cross, lead uppercut, cross, lead hook, and lead hook to the body. Disgusting combination. Next up is the cross lead body hook lead head hook rear head hook and lead hook to the head another nasty combination then the 2b which is going to mean cross to the body right then it's going to mean lead hook to the head then lead hook to the body and then ducking roundhouse now notice because jones is a little bit too tall the art it doesn't really reach there so if you go in open stance here and just obviously switch up the inputs accordingly, you're going to be able to land that ducking roundhouse a lot easier, assuming your opponent doesn't back up out of range. Same thing is going to apply to the lead hook, lead body hook, ducking roundhouse. If it turns out your opponent's too tall, you're a little bit too close, and you're having a hard time landing it. I know his switch stance isn't exactly that high, but landing in open stance, if you guys are in opposite stances, will make it a lot easier to land this ducking roundhouse in the pocket. All right? One more time. Boom. Very simple. Yeah, so this is my favorite one. I landed this in the ESFL title fight against Unibot. It's going to be the lead hook, double lead uppercut, and rear overhand. Disgusting. Oh, one of my favorites. Then there's this one. The lead hook to the head, lead hook to the body, lead uppercut, rear overhand, and lead hook. That one's awesome as hell. Then the lead hook, lead hook to the body, rear hook, lead hook, and rear hook. Basically, you're just kind of like matching hooks at the end there. Same thing with this one here. It's going to be the lead hook to the head, then the rear hook to the head, then a lead hook to the body, and then it's going to be a rear hook to the head, and then a lead hook to the head. Obviously, a little bit out of range there. It is what it is. Then this one's basically you're smashing hooks, all right? It's, it's very simple. Lead hook, rear hook, lead hook, rear hook, lead hook. All right? 
Simple. Very simple. And then the last two. Double lead uppercut into the rear overhand. Boom. And then the final one. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this instructional video. Rear overhand into lead overhand. Mirror 17. I'm out of here. Have fun using Saki.